Good evening and good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're uh, very happy to be here and we're, we're very much enjoying ourselves in Mumbai. Um, we've just come from a, our roundtable discussion. This is something that we initiated in 2015 in the Getty Research Institute in Los Angeles. And it was the first time that we encouraged uh, the various communities involved in the use of film from uh, artists, filmmakers, um, stock manufacturers, neg uh, lab owners, um, the Academy for Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, festivals, uh, education, um, to sit around one, museums as well, to sit around one table and to discuss with great concentration um, what, how we could keep film as a medium available for future generations. Um, and this was the first of, of four, this is the first of four, um, the second one was in London, the third one happened in Mexico City without Chris, and then now we're in Mumbai reframing the future of film four. Yeah, um, we had a very productive uh, meeting this morning with, with a lot of different members of the uh, Indian filmmaking community. And what Tassada and, and I have been trying to do with uh, these uh, meetings where we bring together uh, all the different facets of film production and, and exhibition um, is to really make the case for the place that celluloid film will have uh, in the future in a post-digital world. Uh, and looking at the importance of, of film and celluloid film as a distinct medium, not as a technology that has been replaced by digital imaging, um, but as a creative medium that Tasta as an artist and myself as a narrative filmmaker, uh, that we depend upon. And we've had very productive coming together, uh, a very productive coming together in different filmmaker communities around the world, as Tass has said, starting with uh, Hollywood uh, and then going to Britain uh, and now coming here to uh, the largest film industry in the world uh, and really trying to engage uh, filmmakers uh, in this discussion about how we can maintain and improve uh, and continue to enjoy um, a celluloid photochemical analog infrastructure for, for filmmaking. Um, and the significance really of, of doing this with the Film Heritage Foundation uh, is that this also has a very, very important part to play in preserving for future generations the history of film. Uh, and obviously in this case, uh, the history of Indian film for future generations to be able to experience uh, the way that those filmmakers who made those films originally intended. Uh, by promoting film print screenings, uh, by being able to properly uh, preserve and protect uh, the works of the past and make them available to the audiences of tomorrow. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Dasta, for being with us uh, for this wonderful session we had uh, for the media. If you're interested, uh, there was... Uh, it was a very great mix. I think for the very first time, we had such wonderful uh, people from different aspects of creativity coming together, whether you had the director Sabisachi Mukherjee or Tasneem Mehta from the museums, or you had Shah Rukh Khan and Mr. Bachchan, or you had the exhibitors from Inox, PVR, uh, even from SP Films from the South, or the, some of the big DOPs, Santosh Sivan, Sudeep Chatterjee, Jaya Bachchan, Anupama Chopra, Siddharth Roy Kapoor. And I think what is very important as a film preservationist and also as a filmmaker, because I sh I've shot everything on celluloid in whatever I've shot with, is that we are fighting a battle to save celluloid films in India, where people are disbanding those films, people are 
not realizing the importance of celluloid. And when you have two such great advocates who are talking about coexistence with digital format, coexistence in projection, coexistence in every aspect as a medium of film, it just strengthens our advocacy for celluloid as a preservation tool. I mean, we shouldn't forget in India, till 2014, we were still shooting on film. I mean, when I shot Celluloid Man, I was so interested that it should be shot with different cameras. So I actually shot on every possible camera which existed, whether it was Super 8, 16, even a 70 Panavision, every possible, and it was it was because I wanted to experiment because I knew that I'm dealing with the history of films. And with the history of films, what is fascinating for me is the transition of different periods which we have gone with formats and, 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 and the change we have seen in terms of celluloid. And I wanted to have all that in one film because I didn't know when will I get a chance to shoot different formats and different films. And I think that challenge to preserve different formats, the different forms of satellite. I think that's something which is a challenge even now for us because, because people are sort of digitally transferring films in, in a sort of format in India, especially for India, where everything is called HD and we are re disrespecting the aspect ratios. So for me, this dialogue was of utmost importance in projecting film, in shooting in film, and more importantly, for preservation. We have been reading reports everywhere of how many films are being lost or thrown, or I visit go-downs and, you know, you're just seeing a sad way celluloid has been neglected and people have just moved on. So I hope their advocacy will help us to preserve this long history. I mean, till 2014 we were shooting in celluloid. Do you want to throw that away? So let's preserve that. So that's what we were talking about, yeah. Anything? So do we take questions or we carry on? Yeah, yeah. do we take, that's it? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what about the conversations? Okay, do you want to just? And continue. Yeah, just, just a few conversations. Okay, the first, um, <coughs> And the round table was divided into sort of three sections. And the first was um, about capture or filming. Um, I should say that also amongst us was uh, Jeff Clark, the CEO of Kodak, who in our uh, Getty event um, came out and said that actually Kodak is absolutely committed to film. And this, and again, in the public event that evening. And this was a moment where, you know, there had been a lot of, uh, you know, speculation that the film was over. And actually, to this day, I keep being asked, does Kodak still make film? And, and they do, uh, very much so. And um, so that alone was, is to try and stop the understanding that, or the misunderstanding that the film is not available anymore. It is available. It's very much available. And I think the whole point of this, and I'm an artist, so my context is in, within galleries and, and museums, and what's very important to me, and which is as, as something that's, having spoken to Chris a bit about this, is that a lot of um, filmmakers are not allowed to choose, you know, actually don't have the right to, or the authority to choose the medium with which they want to make their work. And in art, of course, in my world, um, you know, mediums, and I pluralize it deliberately to give it power, are what artists use. You know, we all know that artists use you know, paint, they can use print, they can use photography, film, sculpture. That, that is, makes sense to everybody in this room. Um, and for, you know, for, for within cinema to be told you can only use digital was a, was a very foolhardy thing. So it was, this was the beginning of our discussion was uh, about how to encourage uh, people to shoot on film again and saying that it's available was the, one, the first thing. And also, in a way, to counteract the negativity about film, you know, the pessimism. Um, and so that was, and then we moved on to uh, exhibition, that, you know, it's very important that, you know, clearly uh, cinema is in India and in much of the world in a, in a, in a mass way is, is, a, is become digital cinema. But that doesn't mean that the film's not available in film, uh, some theatres and 
and, and archives and in museums and also um, for special occasions like Dunkirk. And then the final um, thing was, was preservation. So we split it into these three areas. Funnily enough, I don't think I should be the one answering that question, because I'm in an I show in museums and galleries, and my uh, um, I my desire is for the works that are made in as artworks are not in any way digitised, because for me, a digitisation of a a film made by an artist in an art museum is a facsimile and not the original. And we've talked about this a lot, but in, in the art world, the word, you know, we use the word medium, we use the word medium specificity, which means that if you go and see a painting, it is a painting. It's not a, a digital copy of the painting. And the museum is the place that protects the original object. And, and we, have to protect, we have to apply those rules within um, museology. We have to also tr apply them to... Um, you know, within cinema, but I'm not the person to answer about streaming, of course, I, you know, it's well for Chris, I think. No, but there's a part of the oh, sorry. Yes. sorry. Say that. Well, for a start, we're going to stop talking about film versus digital. This whole reframing the future of film is to start bringing in film plus digital. We're living in a, 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 a landscape where we can have both. You know, everything is about choice. So it's very strange on this one issue we should be reduced to just one option again. And, and it's all about choice. So um, I don't know if that answers the question because I didn't quite because hear it. But because as an artist you should have the choice to decide the medium you want to shoot on. And that's what the dialogue is all about. That's what we are all looking at. I should have the choice to preserve the film the way I want to preserve it. And I'm sure if I've made a film, I, I, I don't like to see celluloid, man, I try to push. I remember when it was chosen in Telluroid, and uh, this, uh, we had great friends there, and they said, it's too expensive to ship the print. I said, I'll offer to pay for it, but I'd rather have you watch in the way I've shot the film. And that's what we all aspire to be as creative people, is that we want <coughs> the original format in which way we have shot the film to be seen in that. The next question is addressed to Mr. Logan. Are there any common misconceptions about digital and film that harm the conversation you want to initiate? There's a famous misconception about digital's longevity and reliability. What are some of the others? Well, I mean, a lot of the point of these events and the point of the, the conversation we had this morning was in dispelling certain myths. Um, really, there's a rise because there's been a very powerful uh, financial imperative for uh, electronics companies and, and technology companies to try and transform the industry. And that's always been the same. There's nothing new there. But what happens as a result is you tend to get accusations to undermine a particular medium, in this case film, uh, accusations that it's more expensive or it's prohibitively expensive or it's too difficult or there aren't any projectionists left to project the film prints, these kind of things. Um, and we've spent the last few years just patiently explaining that you know, film is here to stay and it's a wonderful medium that we can all enjoy and we've continued to work in the same way we've been working for, for many years. Um, and as Tassita said, it's really not about film versus digital. Um, it's about preserving this medium for you know, future generations of filmmaking to be able to use it. Um, and so, I don't want to repeat any of the misconceptions because <laughs> they, get, they get propagated. But uh, you know, ultimately, what's been really exciting about the meeting today, a meeting with leading members of, of the Indian film community, is there's a spirit of optimism, there's a spirit of uh, film having uh, a wonderful future and, and great potential. And there's a lot of excitement around it, uh, a lot of excitement from filmmakers and exhibitors and, and everybody else in terms of continuing to give audiences a reason 
to leave their homes and come together in a movie theater to experience a story. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I just want to add that uh, just after the meeting, two, two DOPs have confirmed that they have said that they're very sure they're going to go. Sudeep Chatterjee, who shot Padmavat and who shot all Bansani's films, and you also had Santosh Shivan, who's going to be shooting his next film on film, on cellular. So I think the meeting translated into uh, even, even someone like Shahrukh, who was there, he had his own great opinion. And he's been, he's, he's messaged me, and he, he's sort of so excited about the fact that, that this medium is something which he thinks should be there for all of us. And we are all very excited about it. And actually, I just want to say something more about the poetics of the medium. I felt very strongly this morning, it was quite an emotional meeting, yeah. because there was actually around that table a profound understanding of the, the qualities of, and the nature of film, um, which almost every person felt. And, you know, film is a different medium. I could not make my work with digital. And um, I, my, I work with all the, in, you know, what I call the disciplines of film. Um, so, you know, and I'm very, for me, it's about the poetics of the medium. I'm into chemistry and into the light and into the magic and the blindness and all such of this wonderful medium. And it was a very, very strong sense today, uh, I thought, that everyone kind of understood yeah. the, 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 the sort of fundamental differences of this medium from, from a digital medium. So it's not like we are in any way trying to go back. We're actually trying to go into the future. And my aim, my personal aim, is that I want it to become normal to shoot film. I want it to be normal. I don't want to be, I mean, we both don't want to be doing this in 15 years' time. <laughs> we want it to be normal. We, want, we don't want to have to, resi you know, meet the artists and filmmakers don't want to have this resistance anymore because it's just there and it's fine. Let it just be normal. Well, I mean, very much so, actually. And I don't think we should underestimate the viewer. Because I know from personal experience, people that will cross cities to go and see a film projected as film. I mean, because the experience is different. And yeah. I know that's exactly what... I mean, you all know about the Dunkirk screening. I was just giving that example. 70mm Dunkirk screening in IMAX Madala and 35mm Interstellar at Liberty. It took 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, for the tickets to be sold because it was just about 70. People want to experience to see a film the way the creator had created it originally. And I think that's the respect which we must have and we must feel for it. So here you are. I think mean, Chris wants to add to that. It's also a good film. Give it a break. I think. No, I, th I think uh, it's exactly the point, which is uh, I work in, in a field uh, where the audience is constantly being underestimated by people who finance the films and distribute the films. There's often a feeling of nobody cares, nobody knows the difference. And, and actually, when you talk about myths to be dispelled, I think the main myth is when this discussion has arisen in the past about why somebody would choose to shoot a film, even if it seems more difficult than shooting digitally, they speak as if filmmaking were a, a logical and a pragmatic yeah. thing to do, and it's not. And no film is logical and pragmatic. Films are about dreams, they're about magic, they're about escapism and, and experience. And so, to a certain extent, you have to embrace your emotional side and your feelings about the medium and whether you want to work that way or not, or not work that way. Those things become, become important. And I think we see that just as much from audiences as we do from, from filmmakers. We're constantly in dialogue with audiences. Indeed, we are the audience ourselves. And uh, we forget that at our peril. In, in some way, I feel uh, not enough choice has been given to the audience too in India. You know, yeah. they, they don't have, I mean, really, if you really want to see a film on 35 mm or 70 mm, where do you go and see it? And that's what we, that was the whole point of the dialogue, that to make that space available to see whether exhibitors can come forward, where they could be. You know, I was just before uh, Tasta got in touch with me, I was in constant dialogue to 
have 35 on screening in the preview theater of Liberty as a club where they can experience the 35 member because we didn't have our own space. Uh, we don't have a museum or a space because we are a very young foundation. And uh, I think this dialogue will help that to, to sort of feature. Even the, even the NCP, where we are going to be talking, they have 35 member screenings, they have 16 member public projectors, but they haven't been working. And the inspiration we will get out of this is the fact that you will see them running back soon. So I think the viewers are going to get it. it, it, it it's going to change. And uh, we hopefully, this dialogue will help us to make it very soon. Thank you. Mr. Nolan, uh, you're a great But I think making films is always about facing insurmountable, seemingly insurmountable odds. Anybody who tries out to go out and direct a film um, and has to get a budget, has to get a crew together, has to surmount all kinds of obstacles. And so I'm just trying to position uh, and empower filmmakers to, to view their choice of medium as one of the things that they have to fight for. Uh, and none of these fights are easy, uh, particularly when you're starting out, uh, but they're all worth fighting for, and they're all part of that tension and that process that filmmakers go through to tell the stories uh, that they want to tell. And I think some of that tension can actually be uh, productive because you're made to think about what's important to you and what you really care about. And what we want to see as film goers on screen are stories and presentations that the people who made them care deeply about. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I mean, I felt very positive energy in the conversation from, from all aspects, particularly exhibition. Um, obviously, their frustration is that they get pulled in different directions and they're told to go digital because people want that, and then it's come back to film because people want that. Um, but I think the, uh, the enthusiasm and the excitement that everyone feels around films in, in this community uh, is vital and is what will allow great things to, to happen in this regard because ultimately it's about getting people together, getting them out of the house, and giving them a, a fantastic uh, experience at the movies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.